This is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. That means that we continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And now, day and age, in today's day and age, we see that there is an infiltration in the body of Christ. Or did Trump lit the world on fire? Now, I realize that is not a proper terminology. Or did Trump light the world on fire? This is Restorative Justice Brer Caleb, PhD. Now, is there truth to Elon Musk's statement? We are summoning the demon with artificial intelligence. While he believes smart machines can take us to the Mars or the moon and drive our cars for us, Musk remains worried that artificial intelligence holds a darker potential. And I wonder if Mr. Musk is correct, because our artificial intelligence is dumbifying the because that is the only way that I can see people acting, and I'm talking the body of Christ, people that are claiming to follow the Lord and acting like morons. Let's take a look and see where this leads us. A super infiltration into the body of Christ, or did Trump light the world on fire? Restorative justice, Brer Caleb. Yeshua HaMashiach, also known by most people as Jesus. When he was talking to the masses, he uses the attitude of a rabbi. He was a person that shared with people to educate them, to help them come closer to the understanding of God. When I watch the body of Christ today, it is amazing that during all the commotion, the storming of the capital, the excessive force of a use of force, deadly force of use, and then to find and discover that the police itself was infiltrated or worse. And Jesua talked to the masses in simple forms. And he said, he who uses the gift of tongues to seek after riches or to hold sway over the enemies, he shall no longer be a son of light but a whelp of the devil and a creature of darkness. Oops, folks, do you hear what I'm sharing with you? I prepare myself on a regular basis daily. Sometimes in the middle of the night I'm still writing because I try to be careful. But in the same token, I realize that we as a group of people, we as humanity, there is very little humanity left. If people are shooting up schools and the senators or the house representatives, they are laughing about it. They are bringing guns in the Senate or in the house for what? And they call themselves Christians. Then I would urge the body of Christ to start speaking up or to agree with me that you are praying to a God is called Satan. Yes, folks, if you can allow this kind of attitude as preachers and you do not speak up, I dare say that you serve Satan. Are we searching for justice or is the body of Christ but overfed and malnourished? Reviewing the attitude and the insurrection of January the 2nd in 2021 it does not appear that Trump nor any of his cronies regret the violence and the death of at least six people. Several people committed suicide, but it seems to be very convenient that some of those people were police officers. And there are not too many police officers that like to commit suicide with their own weapon. But this is not something I like to go into. What is going on? A shame while it is in the last day of his office and Mr. Trump is responsible for the end of many hoodies in the final days of one term President Trump because he has to push the weapons. He had to make sure that someone was going to die because he will not take on responsibility, but he will give the weapons to his Saudi friends. Okay, 
I gave you this, the body of Christ. You are running a race, but you're not going in the right direction. How to stop being steeped in corruption or does the body of Christ turn a blind eye instead of speaking the truth? We discovered a massive influence operation penetrating the followers of the way, the truth and the light. Initially it seemed so innocent, let's pray for Trump, but the more the man manifest itself as a corrupt and immoral person the more the body of Christ should be aware of the fire they are playing with. According to veterans today, Trump is supporting domestic terrorist groups fed to Russia, or by Russia, and all active police informants paid informants. All of those guys are paid informants. Nearly 140 officers were injured. Mr. Gus Papadopoulos he said, I have officers who were not issued helmets before the attack who have sustained brain injury. One officer has two cracked ribs and two smashed spinal discs, said the union chairman Gus. One officer is going to lose his eye and another was stabbed with a metal fence stake. One officer has two cracked ribs and these injuries were not previously reported, only the death of Officer Brian Sicknick, who died the following day after sustaining injuries in the seats had been reported. Radical Trump attorney Linwood was forced to undergo a mental evaluation to keep his law license. Folks, a madman surrounding himself with mad people, enablers that are surrounding Trump called the body of Christ. What is wrong with this picture? Yes, folks, I'm talking to you, the leadership, Pat Robertson. I know you called him eventually and said, listen, we got to do something here. Biden became or is the president. But what about you, Mr. Kenneth Copeland? I always admire you for so long, but I'm deeply ashamed. I'm deeply ashamed. Yes, folks, John Hakey, where are you? Where is your big talk? You're selling out for the devil? And what is it here with Paula White? All your prophecies about God says, shows me that folks, you are on the wrong track. Sit rot, you're Jewish, you're Christian, you're moron. How in the world can you allow this? I'm so sorry that I have to say this. It hurts, folks. It hurts. The body of Christ is under attack. Don't you see what's going on? The nonsense that goes on and on about the body of Christ. Are you so desperate to be accepted by Satan and his cronies, folks? I tell you truly, and many are those who do not know peace, for they are at war with their own body. They are at war with their thoughts. They are they have no peace with their fathers or their mothers, their children. They have no peace with their friends and neighbors. They know not the beauty of the Holy Scrolls, the Bible. They labor not through the day in the kingdom. Peace reigns not within them. Forever do they first do for that which in the end brings only misery and pain. Even those trappings of riches and fame which Satan uses to tempt the sons of men. And they live in ignorance of the law, even the holy law by which we are supposed to live. How then may we bring peace to our brother's master as someone of the elders? This was a question posed to Jesua Amasia when he was around on this earth. For we should, we would that all the sons of men share in the blessings of the angels of peace. And Jesua answered, he said, truly, only he who is at peace with all the angels can shed the light of peace on others. Therefore, first, be at peace with all the angels. For the winds of a storm stir and trouble the waters of the river. And only the stillness that follows can calm them once again. Take care when your brother asks you for a bread that you give him not stones. 
live first in peace with all the angels, for then your peace will be as a fountain that does replenish itself with the giving, and the more you give, so the more you will provide it, for such is the law. This is a statement by Jeshua HaMashiach. Three are the dwellings of the Son of Man, and no one may come before the face of God who knows not the angel of peace in each of these three. These are his body, his thoughts, and his feelings. When the angel of wisdom guides the thoughts, when the angel of love purifies his emotions, and when the deeds of his body reflected both love and wisdom, then does the angel of peace guide them unfailingly to the throne of the Heavenly Father. And he should pray without ceasing that the power of Satan with all his diseases and uncleanliness may be cast out of all three dwellings. That power and wisdom and love may reign in his body, his thoughts and his feelings. Jesua a.k.a. Jesus rebuked the Jewish leaders for not discerning the signs of the times about his first coming. Today, most Christians, or better, the body of Christ, are deceived about end-time prophecies and Jesus' return. The truth is born out of the spring of light, falsehoods from the well of darkness. Folks, be careful. Listen to me, what I'm saying. It is so painful. The truth is born out of the spring of light, falsehoods from the well of darkness. The dominion of all the children of truth is in the hands of the angels of light, so that they may walk in the ways of light. So blessings on all of the sons of light who have cast their lot with the law, that walk truthfully in all their ways. May the Lord bless you with all good and keep you from all evil and illumine your heart with insight into the things of life and grace you with knowledge of things eternal. The law was planted to reward the children of light with healing and abundant peace, with long life, with fruitful seed of everlasting blessings, blessings with eternal joy in the immortality of eternal light. Folks, that is the desire of our Father, Abba Father. But following Mr. Trump, you are following evil. And you men of God that claim to be policemen, that are in authority, are sitting in the Senate or in the House, please consider what you're doing. And remember, tough times never last, but tough people, they do.
Good day, this is Greg Caleb, PhD, and my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker. For because I continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. And the reason why I do that is it took me 60 years to understand and to formulate what is going on in Christianity, the body of Christ. Donald Trump, the rabbis, and the third temple sounds a joke but it isn't folks right now president former president donald trump is indicted for sedition for a whole bunch of slew six people died because of an insurrection and then we have christianity the body of christ evangelicals totally blinded praying for a man that we all need to pray for because every sinner is worthwhile in the eyes of the Lord and therefore in my eyes. But if Mr. Trump, the rabbis, are working on the third temple and Christianity wants to support that, I've got news for you folks. You are in a bad position because you're doomed to fail. See, the problem is that we have a spiritual kingdom and we're trying to desperately create with our own hands a kingdom that God does not want. God specifically said what he wants us to do and then he gives us examples of what we need to do and we are so great, so awesome, we are so incredible, stupid that we still do not understand. I've called out Sid Roth, Paula White, Kenneth Copeland, John Hakey, Pat Robertson and many, many others. I put them in my videos. Folks, contact me. If I'm wrong, please let me know. But I warn you, don't go and continue doing what you're doing. If God does not speak and you say, thus says the Lord, and you make your people, your followers, follow you, spending millions of dollars with Mr. Trump, who is a disaster. And now on top of it, Oh, folks, you figure it out. I am here only to share what the Lord wants you to know, because I needed to know it. Yes, it is important that everyone understands the difference between wheat and seed. And right now you're blowing a lot of wheat. You're wheat spreaders, super spreaders. And Mr. Trump was a perfect example of being a super spreader. But without his enablers, the body of Christ, he would never have been able to do what he did. And therefore, folks, pay attention, because this is very important. I want you to make up your mind. Are you going to vote that Mr. Trump is guilty of sedition, insurrection, and all kinds of other things that are being presented before the court very soon, the Senate? They have to vote on it. It takes a few more weeks, so you don't have to make up your mind right away. But I strongly recommend that you pay attention to this. Is Mr. Trump guilty of an insurrection? And if he is, what about his enablers? You, anybody that voted for Trump, that paid cash and is still paying cash because hundreds of millions of dollars are wasted. Yes, folks. You are wasting your money. And if you really want to support somebody, why don't you subscribe to me? I need a thousand subscribers. That's all. Whether you like or don't like what I say, just subscribe. That helps me and I can be in help of, to you because there is so much more that we need to deal with. And I realized that the majority of churches does not want to deal with this because it is painful, folks. You know why I have been able to do this? Because I had to learn the law. And I like to share that with you and come to an understanding why it is so important to understand Donald Trump. Is Donald a bad dude? Unfortunately, he's shown in his actions that the man knows how to go bankrupt loses billions of dollars, screws everyone around, and yes, you know, I don't have to tell you what he is. He's a narcissist. But 
It's not about him. It's about your position that you take. And your stand will determine how you and your family and your loved ones will end up. Are we going to meet together when the Lord comes and when he sits down with us? Or are we going foolishness just after an idiot, a man that has no brains other than me, me, me and myself? So let's go and check out why this session is so important. Now there are a couple of things that we have to set up first. First of all, it does not matter if you are a Roman Catholic or a Protestant. And I'll tell you why. Very early in the beginning, when God created this world, He created Adam and Eve. And a majority of men in the GOP, and I'm talking about the American system, the Republicans, they think that it is white men running a white Christian organization with white lots of money. Of course that's stupid, because right now a lot of people have recognized there are brown people and there are black people and there are all kinds of other people in between because it's immaterial. But the old GOP under Mr. Trump wants to hold on to the fact that the mill is the leader and the wider you are the better you are well when we look at the creation of God Almighty he looks at two types of people he doesn't look at whether you're white or black or whether you have a yellow hat or a black hat nobody cares God looks for are you following the way or not that's all. And if you are black, if you're yellow, if you're green, if you're from Greenland, or you happen to be an American that had its name Trump, it does not matter. If you are not on the way, and you're not following the way, you can call yourself whatever you are under the sun, but you are missing the boat. Why can I say that so strongly? Because it is proven in the stories, the fables, the uh, story, the little system that Yeshua used to speak simple to a normal person. In other words, someone that is not educated in theology, someone that is just a normal individual. And he said, blessed are those. So if you are poor, if you are searching, if you are looking for God, God wants you in his house. But if you are a sophisticated, rich dude that has everything and doesn't care about nobody, then too bad, because you will have another problem coming. So let's go back to creation. When Adam and Eve started out, they were husband and wife. Now, I know that I'm going to step on a lot of toes when I say certain things, but I say it in love. God is an awesome God, and He speaks at a level of sophistication that very few of us understand. I am just barely touching the bottom, and I tell you, for me, what has happened over the last 20 years is unbelievable. It started for me in 1950. Uh, sorry, when I was born and in 2000s, when I got a business that was doing very well, my business was uh, doing millions of dollars, generating all of a sudden assets up to the billions of dollars, and so-called we had it made. We lived nice, we traveled nice, we had friends all over the place, and I was busy until I ran into a snack. And that is where my eyes actually started to open. Before, I had always a challenge. What is it with Adam and Eve? I was married now by now for uh, 24 years when I was, what, 2000? We had been married for 24 years with two beautiful kids. We had a third, but he passed away. 
So that was an experience in itself. But the reality was we were working, we were successful till I run into a situation that really made me think about lots of issues. And one of them was, why are we meeting over the border in Cancun, listening to a speaker that is explaining the real issues about money. I used to work on Wall Street. I learned a lot from the bankers that I worked with and when I went back I applied it and we became successful. But one thing I did not realize that was that the people that were controlling the banking, the politics and religion were all the same. You say, how is that not possible? Yes, folks. If you have Freemasons that are running the politics, P, and the money, M, and S, the spirituality or religion, what do you get? PMS. And some women say, oh, don't talk about it because it is painful for some people. But if you are on the side of God and you understand God's position, God created us, he gave us a physical body. He gave us a mental ability that we could talk and walk and communicate with God. And he made us spiritual. But the moment we sided with Satan, we had a problem because God had to step in, otherwise we would have been lost forever. So it was for our own good that God had set Adam and Eve aside. And so when Adam came to his senses, he recognized that something was wrong. And that is the same with, with us now. We are now in 2021. We're going to see the second impeachment from Mr. Trump. Now, he is the first in over 200 years, 250 years that is impeached twice. But the reality is, aren't we all impeaching ourselves? I've had pastors asking me, well, what is wrong with Mr. Trump when I wrote a book about it? And that was in 2019. It took me seven years to write that book. So it was not something that just came about. And reality is, what is so wrong with the system that we have today? See, we are carnal. We are working in the flesh. And the body of Christ, the majority of them, seem to be charismatics. People that say, praise the Lord and hallelujah, and can sing fantastic. But the reality is, they are carnal. And why am I saying that? Is John Hakey carnal? Is Kenneth Copeland carnal? Is Pat Robertson carnal? Is Sid Roth carnal? Yes, folks. Paula White, yes, folks. And why is that such an indictment? Because we need to shake up. I know that a lot of people will say, oh no, don't touch that subject, folks. I had to learn for 20 years in court what it means to have evidence when you make a statement, what it means to have material that you can base your case on. I came to understand Paul after I was in court. 12 years, actually 8 years with lawyers and, and 12 years without lawyers. We spent millions of dollars because one Freemason happens to be a friend of mine, the head of the Freemasons, on top of it. He said, you will regret that you will walk out of that door and do not accept my offer. At that time, I didn't know what it meant. But now, so many years later, having lost millions of dollars, billions of collateral, I know now what it means. And I'm sharing with you folks, not something I read about, but what I went through. I went to jail for six years, times three, or they sentenced me to jail, and I served three years of that because we won an appeal. But the reality is, it's not what happened to me, it's what I learned that I'm sharing with you. You all can up, end up in a situation. Some of you might even feel that the pandemic has helped you to clarify your lifestyle. But this here is so important, folks. 
Why are the majority of Christians voting for Trump, still siding with Trump? Even after the insurrection, they are praying Mr. Trump because he is told that he is like a king that was used years ago, many centuries ago. And Mr. Trump would be used for the end time, the third temple. Uh, folks, I hate to tell you, and I'm the one that's going to inform you, you're wrong. It's immaterial. If you have a group of people that are all aiming for one thing, then you say, what is happening? Oh, the end time is coming. Jesus is coming back. And we have to prepare ourselves. But folks, how can you find out how to prepare for the end time if you are not even in the game? Yes. See, when Jeshua came, and that is, by the way, his name, Jeshua HaMashiach, and they turned that around over the ages into Jesus, we had a little problem. Because Jeshua never came to become a God. He never came a triune. He was just a messenger. And he served what he came to do. He served God Almighty. And he became the first person, the first one that was reunited with God. Restorative justice was finally applied. And now we have a, a feast, a great feast, because we have an example. It's like the four mile. A lot of people that are running are trying to reach a mile and they're trying to reach it within a certain time till someone broke that level. And then other people started to believe. And the same with Jesus, Jesua, when he broke the pattern and he restored the relationship between God the Father and us, mankind, humanity. We now had an example and God said, I want you to follow that way, the way, the way, the truth and the light. And what do we do? After 300 years, the majority of Jewish believers were killed off because people did not like the Jewish people. They always stood on the word of God. They were reliable people. They were awesome Christians. And what did they do? They now had a stooge, a person that was a believer. He was hoyam. He was a outsider. He didn't know the relationship between God and his people. And therefore, when they were forced by a emperor of Rome, Constantine the first in 325, they accepted his offer because it was either you accept it or I kill you. And most people don't have a hard time making a decision. Okay, I'll follow you. And from there on, they became Christians. From there on, they became also the Roman Catholic Church. So if you are a Roman Catholic and I step on your toes, I'm sorry, folks, but somebody got to tell you the truth. And if the truth doesn't sit well with you, then pray about it. If you are now Roman Catholic or a Pentecostal, you are a reformed person, you think, and you are still based on the old traditions of the Roman Catholic Church, you are a pagan Christian. And I know a pagan Christian will have still some flowers and some beauty in it and everything, but I want you to wake up because it is proven with Mr. Trump how disastrous the situation was. Mr. Trump incites people and then he says, so what? I didn't do anything. Six people got killed. Many people lose a great job because they got involved with following a person that is not even thinking about anybody else but himself. And so we have a problem now. We are going to restore the temple, the third temple. But folks, let's go back to what I just shared with you, Adam and Eve. They were husband and wife, and they were perfected in God Almighty. Not just a man, not just a woman. See, when I got married, I'd been on the street, I'd been on my own for quite some time because situations developed. 
it's immaterial what happened. But what is really important is that what I learned out of it, I've always been on my own. As a child, uh, my mom passed away and I got, that's my brothers and sisters sent to an orphanage. We grew up, basically we had the same name, but I don't know them. And then when my father remarried, after seven years I came home. I was 13 years of age and was not used to a family, so very shortly thereafter I was on the street and I've been on my own since then. So there are certain things I had to learn different than the majority of you that maybe was, that grew up in a normal family circumstance. And because of that, I've always been very cautious in absorbing. I always listen, what is happening? Why is this happening? And so we have the same problem now that we have a Christianity. But what is Christianity? Christianity is pagan religion to you call it faith you see miracles but folks we have been hoodwinked reality is that the moment Constantine made this a Christian organization it was no longer God it was a big weed spreader we grew up and I know God's love is so great that he can take something out of it but I want you to be aware that when you choose for Trump and when you choose for restoring the third temple that the third temple the secret is it's when you follow the way the truth and the light that is where you find reality the third temple is within us and why is that narrow path so important? Because God Almighty is on that narrow path. It's His presence. See, we got disconnected from the presence of the Lord. And when God's Spirit comes back with us, and He comes in us, and He lives within us, the temple is us. But a carnal-minded man, whether you're Jewish, Yes, folks, the Jews were the first people that got in covenant with God. But they refused it. They were drinking, smoking maybe, doing anything under the moon when Moses went up to the hill to get the covenant from God. And when he came down, he was so upset. And he threw those down and they got smatter to smatterings. When he went back up to God, God said, don't worry, that covenant was for the children of light. I give you now the Ten Commandments for the children that are living in the darkness. And that darkness, that is what we are facing today. In 2021, we are facing the darkness and we sing it around us and we're praying our heart out. And maybe that's all we know because that's all we, we understand of God. But God is so much more. God said, if you go and follow the way, the truth and the light, my presence is there. I will teach you. I will help you. And God's spirit will educate you. And as you grow older in the spirit of God, a wonderful thing is going to happen. You don't need to worry about the end time because it's none of your business. Yes, folks. You do not have to worry about the end time. And anybody that wants money for some kind of story that they're telling you because they're working on the third temple, that's not necessary. See, there is a problem, and I put it together in slides and in a video, but I realize that so many people do not understand what it means if you are working with Freemasons together with other people, you are already on the wrong track. If your pastor says, well, thus says the Lord, and it doesn't happen because Mr. Trump got booted out or voted out because people are fed up with a man that constantly lies and does whatever he wants just to destroy, then you need to wake up. Today is another day. God is an awesome God. And he gives us again another opportunity. But if we come back 
to what the Bible says. And if we come back to the understanding that when that sword said, come and follow me, it's not just, oh, praise the Lord, I'm a Christian. That is what Constantine the first made out of it. A pagan Christianity will never fly. You are still pagans. You sound very great, you pray in tongues, but really praying in tongues was for another purpose. And so if you want to follow Jesua and want to humble yourself, like I had to do, I really had to do it because I ended up in jail and sitting in a cell for a very long time, 22 hours and two hours yard time is no fun. And you start wondering what in the world got me here? Now we have people praying for Mr. Trump that he gets through this ordeal. The rabbis are ready. The third temple is ready. And they don't understand that this is carnal. See, our Jewish friends had the first covenant agreement with God. And they refused it. Then <clears throat> when Jesua came, they killed him. And then when the heathens had an opportunity, the Goyim, the outcasts, the people that were outsiders, when they got an opportunity for 300 years, everything was fine. And then they screwed it up because Constantine gave you an option. Either we kill you or you become a Christian. And now we're Christians. And what do we do? We vote for Trump. We follow Trump and he is going to be used for the end time. And the third temple is inside. God is restoring his temple inside of us. But what do they know? Our pastor says he got a word from God. Folks, if your pastor spoke about following Trump, repent because your pastor is not the prophet from God that you expect it to be. So, by praying, seeking, God will answer. But you got to be first willing to accept the fact that maybe your foundation wasn't right. And if your foundation has been your whole life like mine, it took me a while to accept it and to understand what was going on. Why am I sharing this with you? I've turned 71 this year, folks. And I tell you, I have a lot to share because God made us to live forever. We don't need to die when we are 60, 70, 80 years of age, or some of you folks learn to die when you're younger. We are supposed to be the creation, the crown of God's glory. But we gotta learn to understand the word of God. And if you're worried about the third temple, folks, don't worry about it. Think about repentance as the son of God, the prodigal son said, Father, forgive me. And God said, come here, my son. Come here, my daughter. And when you learn that husband and wife together, we are a team. I don't have to fight my wife. And of course we have had fight, my wife and I. But I've learned that I am the one that supports her. I am an example. I need to treat her right. And there are so many things we are going to learn. But first and foremost, we need to learn to accept the fact maybe what you have been taught was wrong. And if you can see your way through to ask God, what is it that Greg Caleb is talking about? I am sharing with you folks that this is the time. This is the time because things are changing soon. And that is correct. But God is an awesome God. And he says, when you come to him, he will take you. But you got to first come as a prodigal son. And forget all the stuff that you've learned. And I know that's very hard. So you will have a hard time with it. And contact me. And if you don't like what I say, subscribe. Just to support me one way or another. Subscribe. I can use your help there. And maybe... You can use my help as you start to digest what I'm sharing with you. And folks, remember, tough times never last, but tough people do. And therefore, you are more than welcome to respond. And I would love to help you. 
but you need to first think about it. What is it with that third temple? Why is my pastor so much in favor of it? If you have to deal with the Freemasons, I tell you up front, you are dealing with the devil. And if you need to shake hands with the devil in order to serve God, there's something wrong in that structure. God doesn't need the devil. But if that's the way you want to go, bless your heart, friend. But maybe there is another way to seek his presence. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all those other things shall be added unto you. So therefore, give it a chance. God bless you. Bye for now.